today, first day of class, we're going to learn a little bit about gold itself. Now, the gold mining class, or the mining class, is about more than just gold. We talk about mining of all sorts of different things. But today, we're going to focus on gold and why we can find it in nature. There are two properties of gold that make it so that we can find it. And if it didn't have these two properties, it might still be out there, but we wouldn't be able to easily get it out of the ground. The first property is gold is inert. What inert means is it doesn't react with anything. Chemicals don't react with it, acids don't react with it, nothing reacts with it. It doesn't form compounds in any way. Now that is a little bit of a lie because it does under certain situations, but in general, it doesn't form compounds. And what that means is when you have a piece of gold in rock and the rest of the rock weathers away or oxidizes or goes away just because of the environment, the gold is left behind in its natural state. It doesn't oxidize, it doesn't weather away with the rest of the rock. It stays there. And actually it stays there for a very long time. Gold that has eroded out of a rock a million years ago is still sitting there as gold. It doesn't change. And because of that property, any gold throughout history that has weathered out of rocks is still around. Other minerals like iron, they rust. If, it, if iron weathers out of a rock, eventually it'll rust, it'll oxidize, it'll go away, it'll change into something else. Even silver, which is fairly inert, silver still oxidizes and will eventually go away. But gold stays around. There's a couple other metals that do the same thing. Platinum's a good one. Platinum stays around. Uh, but we're talking about gold today. So the first property of gold that makes it so that we can find it in the environment is it's inert. You might want to remember that word for next day. Okay, the second property of gold does not react or dissolve. The second property of gold that makes it uh, so that we can find it is that it's heavy. And it's not just a little bit heavy. It's a whole lot heavy. Gold is extremely heavy. In fact, we talked last day that it's 19 times heavier than water. So if you had a volume of water and a volume of gold the same size, the gold would be 19 times heavier than that water. You ever picked up a bucket of water? A bucket of water is quite heavy to lift. You had that same size bucket of gold, you would not get it off the ground. It would be too heavy for you. The most common rock out there the most common rock you find in the environment, or mineral that's out there, is quartz. Quartz is the most common. Gold is eight times heavier than the most common rock out there. So you have a typical rock, which is mostly quartz, and gold, gold is eight times heavier than it. Even other heavy rocks. There's rocks that are made of iron, iron and silica. Now there's rocks that are basically just iron, even those are four times lighter than the equivalent gold. Gold is four times heavier than a block of iron rock. So because gold is so much heavier than anything else around it, in the environment, it settles out into certain spots. So in rivers, it's going to settle out at the bottom of the river. It concentrates itself in pockets. And those pockets of gold is why, that we, why we can find it, because we know where to look for those pockets. We know on rivers where to dig to find the pockets of gold. We know in the environment what concentrates gold into one spot, because we know it's heavy. Very heavy. How much heavier? 19 times heavier than water. We call that its specific gravity of 19, but we'll go on to specific gravity later. I said a second ago there's other metals out there that uh, are the same, like platinum. Platinum is 20 times heavier, so it's heavy. It's also inert, it doesn't react with anything. So that's another metal that we can find, precious metal that we can find in rivers and streams and stuff like that, just like gold. Platinum. Got the same kind of properties. 
Silver is similar, but not quite the same. Silver will form compounds. It doesn't erode out of rocks the same way that gold does because it's in compounds in the rocks. So when it does erode away, it er erodes away in single molecules or combined with other things. It doesn't come out in chunks like gold does. Also, if it do did come out in a chunk, because silver does oxidize, it creates a black layer on its surface of silver oxide, which will slowly er uh, erode away, will brush off, and then the surface will get more black oxide and that'll go away. And slowly, over long periods of time, that silver will go away because it reacts with the environment. Gold doesn't. So, two reasons why we can get gold out of the environment. One, it's inert. It doesn't react with anything. And two, it's heavy. Very heavy. Now later on, I'm going to give you a, a lesson about gold reacting, about how it deposits in nature and why it dissolves in water. But that's something very specific. We won't worry about that until later. OK, who knows what's going to be on the quiz next day? What are the two answers on the quiz next day? Inert. Inert and? Heavy. Okay, we'll go for a lot more into this, a lot more into gold and its properties later. But those are the two I want you to remember right now. Inert and heavy. All right. Excellent paying attention, guys. That's awesome.